Hello friends and welcome to my computer screen. Today is Tuesday which means it's time for another scrapbooking tutorial and today our tutorial is going to be taking place on Photoshop Creative Cloud which is what I have up here on my screen although if you have elements that program will work as well. Uh, if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Crystal. I am super excited that you are here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you can see all of my future tutorial and or crafty videos. And then let's go ahead and jump into today's content. So a couple weeks ago, I posed a question on Instagram asking you guys what types of tutorial videos you would like to see, and many of you responded back that you wanted to know more about digital stamps. So that's what we're going to focus on for the month of April. Now, if you've never purchased a digital stamp before, you might not know that when you get them, they actually come in two different types of files. The first is a PNG, and that is going to be an individual file for each stamp within the set. I'm actually going to talk about PNGs and how to use them next week in the tutorial video on Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about the other type of file, which is called a digital brush file or a stamp brush file. So let's go ahead and jump into that and talk about what exactly a brush file is. So what are Photoshop brush files? Brushes are files that are specific to Photoshop. They are essentially all of the images, or in this case stamps, that are included in a set that are included in one single file. So you only have to go in and open up this file one time in order to get all of the images into your Photoshop. Once these are opened inside of Photoshop, they also quote unquote download into the software. So after loading them in, you actually never have to go back and reopen the brush file again. They are just permanently inside of your Photoshop software and easily accessible in that sense. A few things that are unique to brushes, when you are using them, you can actually click and drag your mouse in order to use the image as a paintbrush. Um, in addition to that, you can also just click once and then they will apply onto your image just like a stamp with one single impression. When you are using brushes, the uh, impressions that you're putting onto your images will also become part of the image. So they don't create additional layers. They just become, they are automatically merged into the layer that you're working on. The upside of this is that you don't have to worry about merging layers later. The downside is that once you apply the brush, you can't actually move the image once it's on there. You have to undo and redo the uh, placement, which is fine. So another thing with brushes is that they are super highly customizable. You can alter their size, you can alter their color, their texture, their opacity, and they even have some unique customization filters that I will show you towards the end of this video. So let me show you guys how to get brushes loaded into your Photoshop. So there are two ways to load brush files into your Photoshop program. The first one is as easy as going up to File, selecting Open, and then we're going to toggle into a digital stamp file. I'm actually going to open up the U story stamp file from Ali Edwards, and then we're going to select the icon that looks like this. It says brushes uh, and hit open. Now that is going to go ahead and put those brushes into your Photoshop program. So now we can go over to the left hand side of our screen and we're going to select the paint brush tool from the sidebar. It's literally called the paint or the brush tool. That's going to open up a menu there at the top of the screen that has a lot of the customization options, but it also has this icon. It looks like a file with a paintbrush on top of it. It's called the brush settings panel. And if you click on that, it's going to bring up a menu that's that will show you all of the brushes or stamps that you currently have in your program. So I'm going to toggle down to the bottom of this so I can show you those U stamps that I just imported into Photoshop. So here's one that says you matter. So let's get out of this and we'll put the panel away. Again, we're just going to click on that file looking icon to put it away. 
And let me show you the second way that you can import your brushes into Photoshop. So up in the top menu for brushes, there is the uh, impression or the a little photo of the one that I currently have selected and there is a down arrow right next to it. So if you click on that down arrow, we're going to go into this menu and hit the settings wheel and then select import brushes right there. This is going to bring up our files again. I will toggle to a different stamp set that I don't have loaded into my program right now. So let's do the Allie Edwards list story stamp. And when I come in here, the only file available to me to select is the brushes file. So I'm just gonna select it, hit okay, and then that's gonna show up now inside of my program as well. This is me showing you that you can access your stamps on this menu as well, but but they have them where, you know, a visual of what they would look like as if you had used them like a paintbrush. So you can't actually see what the image is. That's why I prefer to use the uh, brush settings panel because it will give me the exact image. So now let's go ahead and put these brushes to use. Right now I have pulled up a photo from my files, just like a three by four photo. And I also pulled up a three by four blank canvas. So I'm going to open up my brush panel. So first I had to select the brush tool. Then I hit that file button that opened up the brush settings panel. And I'm just going to pick a random stamp inside of that panel. So now I've got this one that's like a flower. So I'm just gonna take this stamp, I'm gonna position it onto my canvas and click my mouse one time in order to make the stamp impression. This canvas right here is sized at three by four and so the flower on it was huge. Whereas this photo is actually not a three by four, it's the original size. And since that stamp is in you know a particular pixel size, it's much smaller on the photo than it is on the canvas. So another thing you can do with these stamps is to click and drag with them in order to paint with the stamp. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like with just a circle. I click and I drag and you can see that it's just painting on the page. But you can also do the same thing with these stamp images, right? So if I select that flower again and I go back and click and drag, this is what would happen. It would essentially paint in the page the image in the shape of the flower image. So let's talk about the different customization features that we can do with brushes. The first is resizing, and there are two ways that you can resize your brush image. The first is to go up to this menu right at the top next to the image of the stamp within the brush tools, and that slider bar right at the top is going to let you toggle the size to be smaller or bigger just by using the slider, or you can type in the exact pixels you're looking for in the field right there if you know that. The other way that you can change the size of your stamp is by using short keys. If you use the left bracket on your keyboard, that will actually decrease the size of your stamp. And if you hit the right bracket, that will increase it. For whatever reason, uh, the program I use to film my screen capture doesn't show you the image of the stamp, but it does show up when you are working with it on your computer so you can visually see how big or how small it is in order to get it the exact size that you want it to be. So the next customization we'll talk about is recoloring. So how do we change the color of the brush that we're using? Again, this is going to be super easy. You're just gonna go down on that left sidebar menu and click on the color square. So the one that's on top, mine right now is showing black. That's gonna open up your color palette and uh, we're just going to pick a color that we want. I'm gonna go with, with like a tealy blue color right here, we're gonna hit okay, and then that's going to change that square to teal. And now when I stamp down my image, the image will be that teal color as well. So here, I'll change it back to the black, and I'll show you that, and there we go. So we've got the teal and the black. Now I'm gonna go over to the photo and show you what it's like uh, to stamp the colors on there. So I'm gonna put a couple of black ones down. I'm gonna go grab that teal color again, put a couple of teal ones down. And now I'm gonna show you that 
I have those all on there. All the stamps are on there. And if I go over to the um, like direction tool, I actually don't know what that one's called. I should look that up. And I try to select the stamps to move them, it will tell me that I can't move the stamps. So the only way to reposition them would be to just uh, undo placing them onto the photo and then replace them on where I would want them to go. So next let's talk about changing the opacity of our stamp brushes. So to do this, this is just gonna allow us to see through the image a little bit more to whatever the background is behind it. We're gonna go back up into the uh, menu for brushes and there is a field that says opacity with a percent. So you can either click on that down arrow and toggle the slider to pick your opacity level or you can type in an exact percentage if you know what you want. So then when I stamped down that teal color, it had a lot more of a see-through uh, element to it. So then I could layer them on top of each other and see the layers underneath. So here, again, I'm showing you on the photo. So now I have that image stamped on there and you can still see into the background of the picture that's behind. Like it doesn't totally 100% cover what's behind it. So it's just kind of a fun effect that you can use. You can also use opacity in order to make something look kind of like vellum if you wanna play around with um, layering different textures on top of each other with your stamps. So the last customizations I'm gonna talk about are these blending modes. Blending modes are something that are unique to brushes. So you can't do these things in necessarily the same way with PNG files. So up at the top of the brush menu, there is a field next to the word mode, and currently in the field it says normal. So if you toggle the down arrow, this is gonna give you all of the different blending modes that you can use with brushes. The first one I'm going to select is going to be called the dissolve. So normal is just going to be normal. Like it's going to cover, it's going to have a hundred percent, you know, opacity. Like it's, it's not opaque. It's totally covering there. It's very crisp. Dissolve on the other hand has a more blurred look to it. So the edges are a little bit more blurred. And as you reduce the opacity, it's going to change the stamp to, or the, the image to be more like white noise than like vellum, right? If we reduce the opacity on normal, your image is gonna look like vellum. If you reduce the opacity on dissolve, it's going to look as though that image is dissolving. It's actually a really super cool effect. The next one that I'm gonna show you um, is just one of the one of the filters within the darken filters. So there's darken, multiply, and color burn, all of which are darkening tools. So when you stamp down your impression, when I did my research, and I will, I'm gonna link something in the, I'm gonna link a, a website down in the description below that I feel like gives the best description of all of these in case what I'm saying doesn't make sense. Maybe they'll make more sense to you. But when you um, apply it onto an image, it is going to combine the color that I have selected in my color palette with the color in the background and it's going to like combine those and darken them so uh, when you stamp it onto white it doesn't have a whole lot of difference but when you stamp it onto a photo like this one it's going to give it that tint it's not going to completely cover the image with that you know with the bright teal color um, but it is going to darken the page using that teal color if that makes sense so let's go ahead and go to the next tool or the next mode in this toolbox. And that is going to be the lightning tools or the lightning modes. So um, these are gonna work the same way as the darkening tools, just the opposite effect. They're going to lighten the image behind it and they will tone it according to whatever color you have uh, selected. Now the only caveat to this is if you are stamping onto a white background, you can't actually lighten white any more than it already is. So 
uh, stamping onto white is not going to do anything. Just like with the darkening tools, if you stamp it onto black, it's not going to do anything. So here's where you can see the difference between the lightening tool and the darkening tool, which is pretty cool. So the next mode that I'm going to use, blending mode, is the overlay blending mode. Now this is within a set that they that are considered uh, contrast blending modes. And basically what it's going to do is use the color that I have selected along with the colors in the background and it's going to create contrast. So as you see as I stamp it, the entire image is not going to be one particular color. It's going to vary according to whatever the colors of the pixels are behind each individual pixel of the brush, if that makes sense. So that is the overlay effect, which I'm showing you right there. So the next set of these blending modes are considered the inversion blending modes, and there are four of them. So there is difference, exclusion, subtract, and divide, and they all do slightly different things. Again, I'm going to link that article that I read down below. They just did such a good job explaining how these how these uh, differ from each other because it's really hard. Like, I don't know that much about Photoshop. So like, I am definitely not an expert on this stuff. I just like to play around with these things. So that first one that you saw that had a lot of red in it, was the difference, the exclusion was the one prior to that, that one was subtract, and this last one is divide. Um, so they all have really different effects on the, the brush that you're using, and it's super cool. The last set of blending modes are called the component blending modes, and again, there are four of them. So there's hue, which was the first one I just did, and it basically puts a hue of whatever color you're using on top of the area that you apply your brush to. There's saturation, which was that last one. It's one of my favorites. It takes the color behind it and saturates it more. It's just super cool. This one right here is called color. And then the last one is luminosity. And so that is going to complete uh, all of the blending modes for you. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. So in concluding this tutorial, um, I actually learned quite a bit in making this one. I am not an avid brush user within Photoshop, but clearly there are some really good uses for them. Like I could totally see using them to make background papers. It would make it easier than using PNG files. Um, and also, you know, just playing around with some of those blending modes I think would be super fun. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something new and maybe will try, you know, giving some of these things a try in your own memory keeping. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will do my very best to answer them to the best of my knowledge. And if you have any ideas for future tutorial videos, please leave those for me too. I have a running list that I keep and, you know, I don't intend on stopping these anytime soon. So uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for next Tuesday when I will be covering the PNG files. And then that will give you an idea of how those differ from brushes, um, both in how they're used and, you know, how they function. And then until next time, yeah, I guess I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I will catch you all in the next video. Bye now.